Thanks, Nolene. Uh, it's a pleasure today to have uh, Wendy talking to us. Um, Wendy is an honorary research associate at UCT and she's studying the evolution of early life in South Africa and nor Northern Norway. She's a curriculum developer for the Center for Education Through Exploration at Arizona State, uh, where she helps creating virtual field trips. And uh, if you have the opportunity to see these, they're absolutely fantastic. She's <laughs> got some projects in, in mind for South African uh, outcrops, which are going to be excellent. Um, she's also part of a team of the school's development unit. Uh, creating resources to uh, train South African science teachers. But today she's going to be talking to us about um, training uh, people working in the museums. Uh, an extremely important part of GeoHeritage is, is the material that's, that's found in the, in the museums. And you know, recently there was this astonishing um, evidence that um, the earliest DNA originated down here where I am on the, on the south coast. And all of this came from stuff that was sort of hidden away in, in museum vaults. Uh, and it's, you know, it's not that well documented and not very easily accessible. But, uh, and it's just an incredibly underutilized and mm -hmm. uh, not, you know, not well understood resource. So, I think you know what Wendy's doing is incredibly important, especially I believe she's going to be talking about uh, moving this into rural museums. And you know, when you think of some of the places, um, you know, with pop there's population pressure, people moving in, and they need a sense of ownership, and they can only come, you know, if, only if they run their own museums will they will they have the sense of ownership towards museums. But anyway, uh, over to Wendy. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing this, Wendy. Thanks very much. Uh, thanks so much, Chris. And I want to thank everybody at the GSSA um, for giving me the opportunity to speak today. I'm super excited about being here. And I just want to say a shout out to all my colleagues at Ezekiel Museum. They're close partners on this project. And Claire and I are kind of taking the lead on it, but Eugene and others, Thalassa Matthews, Eugene Berg, and many other colleagues are going to be um, helping with this project. So even though they're not all called out today, since the project is just going, um, I want to make sure that they get the credit um, and, and everybody knows they're involved. But let me jump right in. Um, I started off in research, but I have a museum background. And from my first job out of graduate school was working in a museum as a collections manager. And so, and also in education. So a museum is in my blood. I am very close to my heart and I'm so excited to be here in South Africa and be collaborating with um, museums. They are super important to everything we do with GeoHeritage as a nation. And as you probably know, with the COVID uh, crisis, uh, museums have really taken a, a terrible hit. And just this May of 2020, UNESCO um, did a, an international survey of museums targeting uh, the, the professionals that work there and all around the world. And this is called In the Face of COVID-19. And if you haven't read it, um, check it out online. It's on the UNESCO site. And so many museums have had to shut down, as we know, they've really been hit hard. Some of the key trends that this uh, survey noticed was that museums are particularly, particularly been affected by the COVID-19. And of the 95,000 museums around the world, 90% uh, of them have closed their doors and may never open again, 10% uh, of them at least. And I've heard that even quoted as high as 40% of the small museums. But um, it, in some ways, some benefits have come from this. Museums have, it's sort of forced them to step outside of their normal activities and focus more on reaching out and staying connected with their audiences. And so they're doing this online. And even though there's the digital divide, uh, they've, they've had to really take a, a second look at this and put more effort um, into reaching out during the COVID crisis. About, but it is only about 5% of museums in Africa have been able to develop online content. Um, Azico is one of them. 
and they're doing a great job. They've had a, a very active digitization program that was has been going on for several years. So they were a little bit ahead of the curve. And even though there is this crisis, there is a positive. The resilience of museums is incredible, as we all know. And here's a little um, graph from the that study showing a list of museums that actually have developed digital content just during COVID. And you know, you, you see the normal ones in, in Europe and the US, but look at here and in, in Africa, South Africa is among many countries that has is in the process of developing fantastic digital content. So out of this crisis has come some really positive trends and you know, our project kind of starts into that realm as well. Um, I've been a volunteer at Azico since coming here six years ago and working with the incredible um, team that Claire Browning heads up at the Azico South African Museum and my colleague Eugene Berg, Thalassa Matthews. Um, and if you don't know already, of course, Azico Museum, the South African Museum, is the first natural history museum in, in South Africa. It's founded in 1825 and has been situated at the company's garden since 1897, I do believe. And they have a fabulous collection of um, incredible paleontological, archaeological, zoological um, collections. So um, a really amazing place, a great resource, geoheritage resource for the country. And I'm really, really lucky to be working with my colleagues there. Claire Browning, um, especially, she's sort of my partner in crime on this uh, collaboration. And it's also working with her fantastic team in Karoo Paleontology. And here they are. Um, these are top of the line uh, technical staff in fossil preparation and collections management all under the direction of Claire and with help from uh, the previous curator, Roger Smith, and many others who are just too many to name, um, have all been such active um, players in, in keeping the museum going. Well, you're probably wondering how this online project may, may have started. Well, in 2019, um, there's a, a really wonderful annual conference put on in the museum world Call, through the organization called the Society for the Preservation of Natural History Collections. It's quite a mouthful, but it's affectionately known as Spinach. And Spinach presents this conference every year. It's an international um, event. And they had the 34th annual one in Chicago, Illinois, in the US at the Field Museum, um, third largest museum in, in the US. And I work there as a collections manager, so I was super excited to possibly attend this conference. And Claire and I came up with the idea of, wow, let's go, let's present on um, what they're doing at Azico and bring two of the people from her team along with us. So we were lucky enough to get funding to spend two weeks in Chicago at this conference. And we brought uh, Sibu, Sisu Mutungata and Zaituna Skosin, shown here, like the infamous Trump Tower there. Um, along with us, and we had an incredible time. We spent the first week at the conference. They were able to network with colleagues from around the world, and it was such a great experience for them because they really got to meet some, some interesting people and their kind of their counterparts at different museums. It was located at the Field Museum, so we had lots of time to explore and we had several um, workshops that they participated in um, shown here at the top is one on photogrammetry so they had some they were able to get some new skills on that and also explore some of their own interests um, there was workshops on fossil illustration databases um, all attended by um, museum professionals from around the world so it was really a really an interesting immersive experience for them, I think. Other things that they did while they were there included um, exploring the museum. This is Zaituna next to Quetzalcoatlus, a beautiful model um, at the, the entrance of one of the exhibits, the Evolving Planet exhibit. And they gave a talk to the volunteers at the museum. This is the paleo, paleo group at the top uh, left. And they talked all about their uh, field work in the Great Karoo and some of the fossils that they've been finding. So the the volunteers at the museum were really excited to learn more about it. And then we had, of course, 
the wonderful social events that they were able to go to. Here's uh, that shown in the bottom is the, the gallery in the main, main museum hall where we had huge dinners and, and they were able to do a lot of networking with colleagues. So that was really a great experience. But what was the most profound part of the trip was a second week that we stayed on in Chicago and we took time to go behind the scenes at the, made, at the Field Museum and another at the University of Chicago. And so here we did not just tours behind the scenes, but we did one-on-one -on -one knowledge sharing experiences with museum experts. So they were able to um, go behind in, in the prep lab, in the collections, and meet people, look at the different systems that are being used, get a real hands-on experience um, with these people. And in the images here, you'll see at the top left is one of part of the dinosaur collection at the Field Museum. And there's a looking at some collections in, with Akiko Shinya. And on the bottom right, is part of the prep lab and, they, and the field museum has a huge prep lab um, that they that they run and they were able to as part of this take some time and really experience uh, how the lab works um, look at the collections and uh, have that one-on-one -on -one mentoring by other museum ex um, experts so that was really beneficial we captured video while we were there but we hope to go back and, and continue that work because this was really just a first, first kind of experimental trip. So hopefully the funding will come through and we can continue that work as part of this bigger project. And just showing Akiko here, taking time to, to look to show them some of the specimens and techniques. Um, also part of that week we spent um, at the fossil lab at the University of Chicago. I used to be a, a project manager for Paul Serino and so I have a connection there and we were able to get them into the lab. They worked with um, Erin Fitzgerald shown in the bottom right. She gave them information on uh, very high tech casting techniques for um, casting of dinosaur material, especially skulls and, and very complicated fossil materials. Um, they also spent a lot of time with Tyler Keeler shown in the bottom left here. And he is world famous uh, paleo, uh, artist, he works with Paul to reconstruct um, fossils from bones. And so they had a chance to go behind the scenes with Tyler. And here's just a couple of the dinosaurs shown that he's reconstructed. Here's Nigerosaurus on the bottom right, uh, Sukumimus top right, and Rajasaurus with Paul on the top left. And there's Ty. Um, he's a lab manager, but also an extraordinary paleo artist. And so they were really able to see like get an idea of the fleshing out of these skulls and all the, the work that goes into it. And part of the lab is actually um, what we call a dermestid beetle room. So what, what they do there is they take in carcasses uh, and they're stripped with the beetles and then they put the, the bones into the collection that are used for teaching and also used for getting information on the fleshing out of ancient animals. So it's really a cool system. And so that, that was some time that they spent uh, in another lab in Chicago. And that's pretty much to give you an idea how the MTech idea took root, the museum uh, experiences that they had during this trip. And we wanted to find out like, what can we do to really make an impact, to really help the museum system in South Africa. And so we really wanted to come up with a program that could have a huge reach and help with, with skills, skills development and just empowering the museum profession. So that's where our project originated. And it's called the Museum Technical Education and Communications Hub, which is a bit clunky. So we just call it MTech for short. But the program goals focus on skills and career development for South African museum professionals. And part of that development also focuses on getting people together to network and not just doing this in South Africa, but connecting with um, international partners. So we really want to have, want to develop this collaborative online forum where we can bring people together and, and share, share ideas, share new methods, um, just have a support network there. Um, and also the third, and I almost say this is probably one of the most important goals in my mind is just to elevate the visibility 
of natural history museums and in, here in South Africa, but also internationally. And uh, I've been working with the Geo Heritage Committee um, in the Western Cape for a number of years. And this is really important to me, I think. It's just getting that, getting the public to see more of what we do with preserving the geo heritage of South Africa. It's super important. Well, we started this in 2019. So we're kind of amazed that we got in, we were thinking of doing more on learning, online learning at that time. But now with the COVID crisis, we've really are a little bit ahead of the game, which is, which is great. And if you aren't familiar that much with online learning, um, I just wanted to just say a little bit about the potential benefits. Um, many people think that, well, geological or, or this kind of education with museum objects is really hard to do online, but I disagree. And I think there are ways that we can um, use new technologies to make this as really interactive and immersive. And some of the benefits of online learning, it, and especially for us in a South African context, is that you can, you can get on these programs and on our mini courses, really even from mobile devices. You don't have to have even internet at your home. You can go to a school or a library, any place. You can get a connection even on your, on your cell phone. So these programs have the potential of reaching really large audiences, diverse audiences. Um, another important point is that they're self-paced. We can integrate multiple languages and we can, all the materials that are posted uh, in our series of courses that we want to develop are things that can be accessed. They're going to be absolutely free of cost. We want to have a no fee system that'll reach anybody who's interested and who qualifies. We're not going to just put it out there um, publicly, but we really want to be able to to have it have a few as few of the limitations to, to getting access as possible. We do want to track who's using it and, and have assessments. So reaching that very broad um, and diverse audience is important. One last comment: the topics can be extremely uh, broad and or extremely narrow. So we can go in a broad sense across museum best practices, um, geological, um, basic knowledge that we want to um, put out there, leadership, um, things along those lines, or we can reach uh, more deeply into these subfields like databases and collections and some of the important conservation uh, methods and, and prep methods. So there's lots of different directions we're going to be taking um, and developing these courses with a slow build out of mini courses. Um, over time. And again, it's all about shifting from the old teacher-based uh, system to an online uh, computer facilitated learning that is totally learner-centered learner that will have a bigger reach. And we're going to use lots of um, interesting tools, virtual field trips um, and the like to really make this as immersive as possible. And hopefully with COVID-19 and the push towards more e-learning, the digital divide is, is getting less and less with time. So that's our other hope. How are we gonna harness this? How are we gonna do it? Well, we're gonna develop the, this academy or, or school of short courses, these are mini courses, and they're gonna be no fee, accessible on mobile devices. Oh God, my cat's walking across my computer. Hold on a minute. Um, They'll be focusing on best practices and looking at standards of excellence. And so one thing that is very important in our mind is showing connections between uh, research, education, and collections. So as much as possible, we want to get away from the silos and focus on transdisciplinary approach, um, showing connections between these fields and um, promoting you know, best practices and standards of excellence uh, we think are really, really important. But we also want to make them really fun too. <laughs> and I wanted to show this, um, the MTech will be kind of building on other work that we've done. So I'm just going to talk briefly about some of the other work that is going to be form this foundation. And part of that is from the Ezekiel Museum. This is Ezekiel Museum's Ask a Curator series. And I just wanted to play this short little video, it's only a minute and a half, um, to show you the kind of things that we'll be using in the courses. And uh, let me just see if this will run for you. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Sibu Mtungata. I'm a fossil preparator and my job entails to prepare fossils and go out to the field and look out for fossils and bring them to the museum. The stuff that I've done at high school were mathematics, physical science and biology. And I never got a, a formal degree, but I got a, a house training. And I got a, a fascinated by fossils when I visited the museum. And that's how I got into this uh, field that I'm, I'm in. information, please visit our website at www.izigo.org.za. So anyways, this just gives you an idea of uh, some of the types of content that we'll be using and developing. And a lot of this will be focusing on things that we, oops, uh oh, how do I get out of here? Okay, there we go. And a lot of this will be uh, using uh, the most popular uh, and robust, one of the most robust learning management systems or LMSs on the planet, and that is Moodle. And I'm sure you've heard of it. This is uh, one of the top open source learning platforms it's used globally. Um, the Western Cape Education Department uh, trains teachers on it. It's used in the United States, in Europe, everywhere. There's uh, some 30 million courses um, a year that are put out there and well over 232 million users, uh, over a billion enrollments in, in many, many countries. And so this is the, the system that we're using. We're taking advantage of the cloud-based option called Moodle Cloud. So we can develop our courses online and we can uh, provide access uh, to developers like uh, the people that are going to be involved in the project. They can log on and add content um, online. So you don't have to be sitting in a lab somewhere doing it. You can do it completely online in the cloud. And like I said before, this system is both usable on computers, but also on mobile devices. Um, and one other note that I wanted to make, if you look down here in the bottom left, you'll see what's called Moodle Box. And this is, an inter this is a really cool um, internet independent uh, system uh, that works on what, what is known as this tiny little microcomputer called Raspberry Pi. And it is a system that provides, that will actually make a, a mobile um, hotspot. So we could take our Moodle short courses on on, in MTech, out to rural museums, out to rural communities, where we don't have to even have an internet connection, we bring it with us, and we can, on this computer, have these uh, small little hotspots that can be accessed in classrooms on anything from a smartphone to a tablet to a computer. And so this, again, is a way we're envisioning to reach out to those rural museums that so desperately need support as well. And we want to include those people in our short courses, give them the support they need and help generate um, lots of new jobs, hopefully. So this is the system we'll use. Like I said, it's based on work that we're doing. This is Moodle, a Moodle Cloud School that I developed three years ago for the Western Cape Education Department. And just shows you this is a teacher professional development uh, online school using Moodle. And it's, it's great and it's um, continuing and we're getting more support from the, the department. Um, here's a couple screenshots just showing you what it looks like. Um, there's lots of embedded media, videos, posters. And what's neat about Moodle is you can, everything on it is you can have downloadable files. So all the modules, people can download all the information. So if you have a problem, you can just print it out. So it's really flexible, really robust. Other work that we're pulling into the MTech project are some online paleontology labs that we developed for the museum education programs. Here's four on fossils that we did a few years ago. Um, and these all focus on kind of basic information, but we're thinking it might be really good to, to put this in and take this content and use it as part of MTech as well. And talking about and celebrating South African heritage, the geosites, that we all know and love. So we want to kind of reuse as much of this content and make it more accessible as possible. Um, and a lot of these labs will use, in these short courses, we use interactive online tools such as quizzes, um, puzzles, virtual field trips. Um, here's videos, all this kind of stuff is sort of embedded. Um, and so we've got lots of that that we're going to be building into our courses. In addition, 
There are lots of free uh, interactives. Like this one is called Earth Viewer, if you haven't seen it. This is another one that we use as part of, that we'll be using as part of our courses. This is an interactive globe and timeline. So you move the little dial here on the left and the continents kind of rearrange themselves. And this is all free through the HHMI Biointeractive site. So we use a lot of their stuff, which is incredible. Um, and also will be the virtual field trips. And boy, would I love to talk more about this, but I know that my time is really limited. But um, I work for ASU, Arizona State University, and I'm on the virtual field trip team. And we go around the world and develop these. And please go to our website and check them out. Um, there's lots of uh, different ones to see. And, and uh, you can look at some of the labs that we've built um, online. So we'll be using these as part of MTech as well. And gosh, hopefully developing them for South Africa down the road. But just to summarize, MTech will be building on our previous successes with courses, um, using customizable content and reaching out to multiple audiences, just leveraging all the work that we've already done um, using Moodle and, and programs like Smart Sparrow and so forth. So again, it's like piping all this in to support the, our project. Um, I'll only say just really quickly about the phases of the project. It's mostly taking place towards the end of this year and across through 2021. We have funding from the Center of Excellence in the Paleo Sciences for two years. Um, and our, our first step will be doing an online survey, then doing the course development and planning, or the course planning and design, and then the course development, and involving lots of our colleagues um, to, to lend their expertise. And we wanna do videos highlighting research that's being done. And, and like I said, using that transdisciplinary approach. Um, the great thing about Moodle too is that we can build in testing and assessments um, as part of the courses. So um, the last phase will be marketing and outreach, and then we'll be applying for funding in the next cycle. But our overall goal is to start in South Africa, but to make this a pan-African program. And to again focus on the African approach, the South African geo sites, and really make this not something that we pull in from the States and Europe, but to make it a very uniquely South African African uh, program. Uh, the benefits we see, these are going to be some of them, um, just to provide badly needed skills development. Um, just because we're isolated and we're scattered, you know, across the country, we really want to try to bring people together and uh, really support each other and share knowledge. And again, this will be also very much targeting geoheritage interactions with geoheritage programs and entities, be a big part of it, we hope, and establish an online forum for communication that not only just across South Africa, but also with our international partners. And with the final benefit is to just really show the public the need for preserving and protecting South African natural hair, natural and cultural heritage. Um, so important. And this isn't really a new, um, there are other programs that are starting up, the UNESCO working with ICOM, the International Council of Museums has started a training program, but it's mostly downloadable materials. It's not that interactive from what I know. You could download manuals and interact with people um, via email, but our program, MTech, will be very interactive and be a series of mini courses. And we may even do field trips if we can do that down the road. So that's lots of ideas in the mix. Um, so I guess I'll stop there. I just wanted to have a few acknowledgements. Claire, of course, and her Karoo paleontology team at the Ezekiel Museum have been instrumental, and Eugene and Thalassa and many others. Um, also, this wouldn't at all be possible without funding from the Center of Excellence in the Paleo Sciences. Um, that without that support, we just couldn't do it. And we want to thank Christine for all the help. The Ezekiel Museum, Ezekiel Friends of the Museum also helped support the trip to Chicago, um, Society for the Preservation of Natural History Collections and so on, and our other international partners. So without this, without their support, none of this would be possible. Um, so with that, I'll just thank you and maybe open up if there's any questions. So thanks so much. Thank you. 
Uh, are there any questions or comments? Can I ask a question? Here we go, Bruce, please go ahead. Thanks, Wendy, for a fascinating talk and very well illustrated. It's excellent. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you uh, what you've described is for an MTech for a formal qualification and the, with all of these different components. Mm -hmm. But um, are some of them sort of standalone? I'm just thinking, for example, our geology honors uh, mm -hmm. class. Um, they don't do much paleontology. So, for example, would a part of your MTech be available to them? Um, as a credit bearing part of a module that they could then use towards their degree? That's the first question. Yeah. And then the second thing is, um, again, is this all involved with your MTech or are there parts of it which are for something like, say, adult education? In other words, it's not, mm -hmm. for, it's not for a qualification as such. Yeah, That's yeah. Wow, those are great questions. I, I think, you know, I didn't really talk about a certification because we're still kind of, we've got a lot of work to do to find out about this, but I think there is absolute intense interest in working with universities and other institutions to develop these standalone courses. I mean, I, we, everything that we create, we want to make available um, to anybody to use. And it would be really amazing um, to take some of that content and adapt it. You know, we could work with uh, you or any, any other institution that wants to develop these, these short little modules. And it would be great if they could be like bite-sized uh, bits of content that universities who don't have paleo or don't have certain other things, other topics um, in their, on their faculty, that we, we would love to support that, absolutely. And we're hoping, that, we're hoping that we can work together with lots of other institutions and maybe even customize some of those things, give you access via Moodle, you can go in and customize um, them yourself. There is one thing I want to mention. There is an initiative at Arizona State where I work um, through the OLI, which is the Open uh, Learning in Initiative. And one thing that, that I'm part of is developing an online platform that's completely free um, for the world to use. Um, we're going to be working on this through Arizona State. And then we want to be able to, I'm hoping we could test that here in South Africa as part of the, part of the initiative. But so you wouldn't necessarily even have to have Moodle. It could be another system that comes online in another year. Um, but certainly working with other institutions and making this available for honors or for some other adult education would be brilliant. Uh, so, you know, those are, we would love to do that. Okay, thanks very much. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Uh, Wendy, have you, have you had much contact with um, rural museums? Uh, not, not too many, but that's again an area that we want to, we're hoping to work with um, Ian McKay and others um, at WITS to maybe build some of those connections, maybe the, the museum at Fraserburg. Um, again, our project is just starting. We just haven't even received the funding yet. We've done this preliminary work, but um, it's just getting off the ground. And I should mention we hired uh, two interns, uh, one who will be doing videography and one who will be doing graphic design and, and helping with the courses. So, but that, that's super important and we want to we wanna definitely, hopefully build those connections uh, as, we, as we get going, definitely. Please go ahead, George. Thank you very much, uh, Winnie, for a fascinating talk. Um, <clears throat> Wendy, um, the Centers of Excellence uh, that are funded by the National Research Foundation, mm -hmm. um, they place, uh, especially in the past few years, a strong emphasis on uh, science education. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, in fact, uh, uh, almost require that uh, all the entities that they fund, um, mm -hmm. including uh, uh, the Centers of Excellence, uh, to spend at least, uh, I think it's about 5% of the budget uh, annually on science education. Yeah. Um, and uh, Bruce uh, uh, Rubic, uh, uh, you can uh, confirm that. And uh, you know, with the amount of funding that's uh, available to the science centers of excellence, uh, it is quite a significant amount. And uh, it's one of the um, key performance areas that uh, the uh, centers of excellence uh, have, to, um, have to meet. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm with the Center of Excellence um, in Mineral Energy Resource Analysis, so short uh, in Cimera. 
and uh, we are also required um, as part of uh, what we do to to educate um, the public in terms of uh, what our center of excellence does um, it's it's economic geology mm -hmm. and uh, again uh, you know, uh, we supply the funding to our our partners and uh, we hope that uh, in the end as a virtual center um, the uh, the different universities um, you know, actually do science education uh, with some of the funding that we provide them um, but, uh, uh, ourselves uh, 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 it's I suppose it is ge geological sciences but it's not quite like paleontology mm. where, uh, where it's easy to explain easier to explain to school kids um, <laughs> Uh, 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 so uh, we are uh, we are always uh, working out on ways on how to how to get uh, science engagement uh, in terms of what we do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, now the museums, all, of, of course, have rocks and uh, minerals as well as fossils uh, in the yeah. collections. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so this would be uh, uh, possibly part of uh, part of the whole uh, whole idea about promoting science um, to the general public, you know, not only to not only to um, school kids, etc. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll just have to uh, take this to my um, my director, um, and then and then we can have a discussion about uh, just pushing a, a bit more science education. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. So, perfect. I'll Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks uh, so Bruce, uh, Bruce uh, Rubich, can you add to that? Hello, um, Wendy, I'm sorry, I've had an extremely frustrating morning with my internet and I've only just got on as your, as your thank you slide came on at the end. So I, I didn't see your presentation, but I did hear what George said and we can certainly concur. And But we, George, Wendy and I are already in conversation about these and various other issues as well. <laughs> thank you, Bruce. Nice okay. Thanks for your comment, though. Thanks very much. Uh, Bruce, I put the YouTube channel on the chat for you, so you have no <laughs> excuse not to catch up on this video. <laughs> Thanks very much, Nerlene. And the, the other one that I missed the other day was, um, uh, what's her name at the South African Museum, uh, who presented on Friday? Mm. Claire. I missed that too. Can you put that on also for me, please? Uh, if you go, if you use this link, you'll go to all the videos that we have put on okay. for the lockdown lectures. Um, I've, Thanks I've very just much. Put, yeah, no, I've just checked Claire's on there definitely. Um, Thank you very much. Questions or sorry, Bruce. <laughs> I spoke right no, over great. you. I apologise. <laughs> no, not a problem at all. <laughs> Are there any other questions or comments? Um, Nolene, if I, if I could have a, a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, go for it. Hello, hello Wendy. And uh, I really enjoyed your talk. I think it's the future that we're looking at. It's Aww. fantastic. Uh, absolutely oh, amazing. Um, I just wanted to say that the certainly the Albany Museum is at your disposal. We would love to... Um, take part in this, particularly if there's some sort of curriculum oriented yeah. uh, oh, subjects. It's Rose, um, right? It's Rose. It's Rose, yes. Hello <laughs> from, from Akanda. <laughs> Hello. Oh gosh. Thanks so much um, for listening. Oh no, I wouldn't have missed it. Uh, but Wendy, uh, particularly mm -hmm. things like coal, which um, mm -hmm. I've, is a, a passion of mine, it, it is yeah. part of the curriculum. Yeah. And exactly. um, we've got some lovely material and I'd be very, very happy to to engage with this. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Well done. Oh, gosh. That would be great, Rose, because uh, we're also really fascinated in, in ancient insects. And I know what you're doing is with the plants and the insect um, interactions is super fascinating. So I'd love to be able to chat with you a little bit about that and certainly building the, some coal and and. and some of your collections into the courses would be incredible. Absolutely fantastic. And if you want to do your um, paleo site fancy photography um, mm -hmm. at Open Pass, you'll have an absolute. Oh my God. So beautiful. <laughs> that eh? would I think be there's, lots, there's lots we can do, Wendy. 
Thanks so much. Do we have other questions or comments? Going once, <laughs> twice, sold. <Done. laughs> Again, I'd like to thank Wendy for giving us that really, really interesting talk. Um, and everybody else, have a wonderful Heritage Day tomorrow. Enjoy the bride. And we'll see you all next week. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you, Wendy. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. I'll end the meeting now. Okay, bye-bye.